Honor Black History Month by highlighting work that's being done to diversify industries where African Americans aren't well represented. And today we're discussing the sport of surfing. So take a look here. There are 35 million surfers worldwide, 3.3 million surfers right here in the U.S. Statistics show that the average surfer is male, white, and has an annual income of around $75,000. Women make up anywhere between 20 and 30 percent of surfers. Black women are a rarity in the sport, but one woman is making waves in an attempt to change that. In 2016, I was floating on my board in Costa Rica, and I realized that I didn't see very many women in the lineup, and I definitely didn't see African American women in the lineup. I also felt like this feeling of pure joy was too much to keep to myself. So I decided to introduce and create more access for girls who look like me to be able to feel what I felt. In 2018, I started Surf Ya Negra. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Gigi Lucas the is the founder of Surf Ya Negra, a nonprofit group aimed at bringing more diversity to the sport of surfing. And she joins us this morning to share her story. Good morning, Gigi. Thanks for being Good with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Super excited to talk to you, but we hear congratulations are in order because you've been selected to appear in Nautica's new Wave Makers campaign. Yes, yes, absolutely. It was it was a complete shock. And if anyone is familiar with the Wave Makers program, it's just stacked full of these phenomenal people. So it's an honor to be able to be included. That's, That's awesome. A, yeah. So tell us, how did you get here? I mean, you started surfing. <laughs> You waited until your early 30s to get involved. Yes, so what yes. even got you started? I, you know, I was a water baby, and um, my parents actually raised catamarans, and we were one of few black families at the regattas and the yacht clubs. So I've always been around mm -hmm. the water. Yeah. Um, but there was something that was inside of me um, early 30s. I ended up going to a wedding in Costa Rica, took one lesson, and that was all she wrote. My that wow. goodness. But you were living in New York City at that time, right? And, I was, you know, I was. surfs up on the Hudson River, I hear. Um, but, but you were. Best waves in the world. Right, exactly, right? You were working this corporate job. You left all that behind. Now, you said you went to that wedding in Costa Rica, but then you moved there. Yeah, yeah. It was, I think most people go through this period in life where they kind of lose their senses and they just go for it. And um, thank God I did because it all worked out. Um, it ended up being. Uh, within the first time I went to Costa Rica for the wedding mm -hmm. to when we moved there only 12 months. Mm, it was insane. Wow. It went really fast. Wow. Well, you had mentioned that you really were no stranger to water. You know, your parents were boaters. So was there something that prevented you from surfing back then? Yeah, I didn't see anyone who looked like me. Yeah. And um, it the 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 adage of representation matters is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. And as someone who came up in a family who had no boundaries, it didn't click in my head as a young girl that surfing was for me because I didn't mm. see anyone who looked yeah. like me. So this is why I feel that not only representation is important, but also the tools for access and how to get right. there is also important. Yeah, because surfing, it's, it's expensive. It is not at all cheap. The board alone, right? Then you add the suits and the lessons. They're not cheap. Um, so Absolutely. how is uh, surf? I'm going to say it wrong. I'm so sorry. Say it for me. <laughs> Surfia Negra. <laughs> how is it working to make this a more accessible sport for everyone? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, first is representation, of course, but then second is access. So we have a fund called the 100 Girls Fund, and we collect money to send girls of color to surf camp in their own neighborhood. So we have a current network of about 74 partnering surf camps around the country and actually around the, the world. And we're able to receive applications from these young girls and then pair them with the surf camp right mm. in their neighborhood. Wow, that's awesome. So, you, you know, people of color have been searching, surfing, though, for centuries, uh, places like Polynesia, ha Hawaii, Peru. What kind of reception have you been getting from those areas and your efforts to diversify the sport? Yeah, that, that's a really great question. And to be honest, everywhere we've gone, we've gotten a really great reception, um, primarily because people don't really think about the discrepancies of race and gender until they see it, right? Yeah. And so when they start to see the girls in the water, everyone without a doubt is like, oh my gosh, yeah, this makes sense. But people have overlooked the demographic of especially young black girls for so long, they're just not targeted in action sports like surfing. So yeah. it's it's a welcome change. Um, we're supported tremendously. 
and there's so much more work to do. I've always been fascinated by surfers, you know, and sometimes I, and I often like to go sit and just kind of watch them in the early morning hours, right? I never got past the boogie board stage, you know, growing up in New Jersey. But, you know, <laughs> it's, right. it's, surfing, no is, surfing is not a year-round sport, right? Especially here in the Northeast. So um, you, you have a program called Surf the Turf to really help children learn some of the basic skills of surfing without ever getting in the water. So tell us a little bit about that program, where people can get involved. Yeah, and actually surfing is a year-round sport. It's just you have to have a strong will to go in the winter, especially out in the Rockaways. Yeah, mm. we saw that one. Guy, those two guys, remember? That's true. I just meant for me. For me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, our surf, the, our surf the Turf program is um, a land-based program primarily geared towards people who might be geographically challenged or lack the skill of swimming because that mm. is a huge challenge yeah. and barrier to entry for our culture. And basically what is security equipment pro um, program that we send to Boys and Girls Club, YMCA, and to schools, and it introduces kids to the fundamentals of surfing without the mm. need for water. Well, I have a question for you. Yes. As being someone that uh, didn't see people that looked like me surfing as I grew up, I am decades and decades old now. Uh, I just took up skiing last year. Am I too old to try surfing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so one of my favorite favorite quotes of all times, I believe is by George Eliot. It says, you're never too late to become what you might've been. Oh, wow. And so there is never, ever a point in life where it's too late, ever. I love it. Yeah, because I actually do want to try it. I want to try it. Here's the thing. Should. I think you should come up here. I think so. Right? I come think back so. to your roots here yes. in New York. <laughs> right? We'll go to Long Beach with Hazel. We'll go to Rockaway Beach. Hazel will suit up. Yes. Seriously, we I have some learn. really good friends in Rockaway Beach too. We're gonna have a blast. Yes. <laughs> You guys hit the waves. I'll, I'll grab the boogie board, and we'll be good. Reach out. Reach Excellent. out when you come back, Gigi. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah, and congratulations on everything, and, and, a, and a special thanks for the work that you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you, Nautica. They've been yes. tremendous in terms of getting the word out. Thank you so much. Keep All hanging right. 10. That's the phrase, <laughs> hey. right? Hey! Hey! hey. hey.